Hey guys, Jazz back with another video. In this video, we're gonna go over our 129 card submission. This was on the last card of the thing. I had to actually put sticky labels on all the cards and stuff. Some of them still have it on because I've just got tired of taking all these these sticky labels off and I'll finish it off later. But I just want to get this video in. Um, I won't actually show these cards because this is gonna be my PSA submission that's going out. These are actually gonna start still gonna go get graded right now. Um, and I'm probably gonna record that video right after this, so that'll be in that PSA submission video. And then these are cards I'm not going to send to get graded at the moment. Some of them I probably will never be sending to get graded, but there's some that I'll just wait to the end of the season, football season, and see how they're going. And most of this is are, the, are football cards. And I'm going to go into detail why I sent to SEC, why I was big on SEC, and what was my reasoning for sending to SEC over PSA, which has most of my cards. Now, we're talking about June-ish time, like early June, I had just sent a big bulk submission to Clay, like 150 cards. I think 139 got got the okay to to get sent, and the card, um, pr the bulk the bulk prices just went up. So basically, they just went up from nine dollars a bulk card to twelve dollars a bulk card. So that was three extra dollars I wound up paying for those hundred something cards that I sent to Clay. So I, I wound up spending almost seventeen hundred on PSA grading. So I was like, oh, that's a lot. And then I'm not expecting them, from, you know, how people talk six or seven months. I'm not seeing my PSA card. So again, I already had sent a couple out, but then, you know, people start saying that. And this was after, right after the pandemic had hit and everything got shut down and stuff like that. So it got crazy. So then I got all these cards in and I'm like, okay, well, where am I going to send them? I got a big bulk order and got a lot of um, Chronicles football. And I'm wondering where I'm going to send these cards. I, I'm, I was going heavy on the Chronicles, getting them for dirt cheap. These are all Chronicles, a lot of base. Some of these are number like this was number 299. This is like a prism silver. These are really nice looking cards. I really like these um, Gridiron Kings. So I'm like, where am I going to send these cards off? And I want these cards before the season starts. So I'm like, PSA, the price that I'm going to pay to get the cards before the season, I'm going to have to pay like 20, 20 something dollars a card. I wasn't comfortable with that. And then I saw a lot of videos where SGC was up and coming. So I started doing my research on SGC. They were up and coming because they were hitting turn fast turnaround times. And it was only like $10 a card. And they, the, the resale was there. The proof was there. Like the cards were actually reselling pretty decently. Because what you ha what I what I did to check how, how the good the resale is, is compared Zion's PSA 10s to SGC 10s. Because Zion had a lot of SGC 10s. The volume is what creates builds up the price of the card. So whenever a card is high volume on eBay, people get comfortable paying that because they already saw somebody pay $20. Okay, I paid $25. Somebody just paid $25 an hour ago, I'll pay $30. Like, that's how things build. That's how it's easier to move those type of cards because people get comfortable once they see somebody else doing it. It's similar to like if you put something in an auction on eBay and they put a high auction like at $50 and the card's worth $60 and people see nobody's bidding on that $50 card, a lot of people will stay away from it. like, oh, why is nobody bidding on it? I'm not touching it. Even though the card goes for $60 or $70, like most of the auction ends there and that auction will probably go without nobody bidding on it because people get scared off by that $50 number like, oh, nobody's bidding on it. But once they see other people, a bid that starts at a dollar, all right, you bid a dollar, bid two, 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 and if it goes all the way to 70 bucks, that's what ends up happening because people see that somebody else values the card at that and they feel more comfortable paying that when somebody else is paying that. So that's the same thing with SEC. They were building. They had a lot of steam going with them into the, um, around that time. They were hitting their turnaround times. And Zion's prices as SEC 10 were about 85 to 90% of a PSA 10, which I thought was crazy. And not all the other cards, but since uh, Zion had a lot of, that's the only people, people were only sending like Zions and stuff like that, low-end low Zions and stuff like that. So that's only that compared to. I couldn't compare it to a card that there was only one SEC on eBay at all. Like, obviously, nobody's going to feel comfortable paying and there's only one there. But if there's hundreds and hundreds of them, people start to build it and the confidence to buy them. So... They were there. The price was there. So I was like, okay, I'm going to send these 129 cards. I'm going to get them back before the football season because it was primarily football. And if anybody who knows the football market right before and like the week into the football season was crazy. Like Kyler Murray's base prism PSA 10. I sold for like 700 something like right before the season started. And it jumped like a week or two into the season. It was up to over a thousand, which is crazy. Obviously, the whole market crashed on like everything so the cards are way back down but the hype and the anticipation of the season i knew that that was going to bring big card prices i knew the prices were going to be trumped up and they were going to be high so i wanted to get these cards back in time 
And supposedly these were a 20 day turnaround. So I'm like, okay, I wasn't expecting a 20 day turnaround, obviously. I thought it was gonna be more of a 40 day turnaround. But again, even if it was a 40 day turnaround, I would get them before the season started anyway, cause I'm sending them in June. So I'm like, okay, a 40 day turnaround. I'll see these like in August latest, maybe early September, I thought. So I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. So I sent them off. The one thing I didn't know because I used to, the person I used to send um, PSA cards to was Clay Cards, and you have to pay up front to Clay once he evaluates your cards and whatever you have to pay up front. So I'm used to paying up front, and when I paid these, I had to pay up front twelve thousand twelve thousand sheesh twelve hundred dollars to send these off. That I didn't know that PSA and those other grading card services, you don't pay until the cards come back. So, yeah, PSA might take five to six months in their bulk submissions, but you don't actually pay that that money of grading until you get it back. So you're, that money is not tied up. See, like when I send twelve hundred to this, that's twelve hundred dollars. I could have been buying cards, flipping cards, doing other stuff with that twelve hundred dollars. And then when SEC finally be like, OK, your cards are ready, then I pay them the twelve thousand and then I can sell those cards. So you keep yourself more liquid. I didn't know that, that that was the difference. I didn't know PSA was that you pay once the cards are graded, which is great. SEC is not like that. That's one thing. So sent the cards over there. Okay. A month goes by. I'm like, all right, I'm I was expecting like two months, whatever. But then I start to see on e on YouTube a lot of people saying they're not hitting their turnaround times. They're taking two, three months to get the cards back. It's getting worse and worse. So a lot of bad news. They went on um, Cardboard Chronicles again. And again, the guy, then they changed their whole method of how they're going to do operate. They changed it to they only have two more ways. You either pay $100 or $10. Either the $10 is whenever they, you know, you get the car when you get it whenever. So I'm like, OK, that really tanked the prices of the resale prices of SEC. SEC went from selling 80, 80 to 90 percent of a PSA 10 to 50 percent of a PSA 10. So then at that point, it's like very little reason to send the SGC. But I'm talking specifically football, basketball, baseball. I think the resale is still pretty close because I don't know what, so what it is about baseball. It's still decent. But football and basketball, the resale is not there. There is a huge wide gap. And that's the thing. Like the, Let's say a Zion Prism PSA 10 sells for 600 as a PSA 10, right? As an SEC 10, you'll struggle to get 300 sometimes. And again, it's a harder sell to get somebody to buy your SEC at 300 than it is to get somebody to sell at 600 a PSA 10. And here's the thing. SEC is stricter in the grading. So again, I'm sending these cards to SEC. Yes, I'm paying less money for each card grading because I think I wound up paying $8.50 per card. And now if you send to PSA, at that time, it was $12 to send. So basically, I'll be saving myself $3.50. And on the back end, I could lose 50, 60, and depending if it's Zion cards, you could lose hundreds of dollars on the back end. So to save $3.50 at that point, I'm basically, by the time I get these cards back and the value of SEC drop because of you know their, their mishaps, I'm looking at like 50%. You know, it's just not worth it, in my opinion, to send the SEC. It depends on your format, obviously. But uh, obviously, the turnaround times don't think because that was my thing is like, yeah, I can send them to SEC. I can send cards to SEC, get them back, sell those cards off, buy a bunch of new cards, send them off and get them around the same time I would have got my first SEC. That was my thinking. I can send two SEC orders in a time I can only send one PSA, like do one flip, full flip, like sending the cards and they get come back and selling them. Probably could do two. That, that was my thinking. But right now, their bulk submissions are even more backed up. How? Because then it October rolls around. Well, in the summertime, I was already debating, should I return my cards? Me, I'm not a big guy on returning stuff. I don't return anything on eBay. The only thing I've ever returned on eBay was one John Morant luminance, and the guy sent the card in a penny sleeve and a bubble mail, and the card came crushed. Obviously, I'm going to return that when a guy's an idiot, doesn't know how to ship cards, and just sent the card out there with a Hail Mary hoping to get there. That's the only time, and I've done thousands of transactions. I've gotten cards that were in bad shape, but again, in my opinion... When you look at if somebody's taking a picture where they're hardly showing the card, you run the risk that the card's gonna be have surface issues or whatever. So it's like to me, I never return stuff. I just figure out a way to sell it or move it or just dispose of it. I I never return stuff on eBay. So I don't like to return stuff. So I wasn't in, in August. I was getting that thing once I started seeing those videos, like getting that itch. It's already been two months. Should I get the bring the cards back? And I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it roll. It is what it is. They're already there. 
I'm just going to go through with the work. And the months keep going by. So now it's October. So I'm like, okay, it's early October. The latest I'm going to get it. I should get it early October pass. Mid-October. So then like two weeks ago, this is right now the first week of November. It's like the last week of October. I send them an email. I'm like, um, I had sent a bulk order in June. Um, you know, it's going on four months already passed four months around four months and you know you you guys have an eta for me whatever he's like yeah like one of their big big guys he's like yeah i'm sorry about that i mean they're they're good they they, they answered the email really fast like the next day and they reached out they're like they had a meeting that they're gonna try to push through some of these um orders like this week they're really gonna be hard to push through some of these orders and then they're gonna get um start working on these bulk submissions pretty soon and they said by the end of December, they they hope to have all the bulk submissions back. So what was happening is on e on YouTube, when I was seeing people get cards back like four months later, yeah, but it was cards when they sent like two or three cards, four, five, six, seven cards, not huge bulk submissions. These they were gonna leave to last. The only big bulk submissions that they were bringing back fast were like big bulk submitters because on eBay I saw a big bulk submitter who got who did a video. And already had got his back cards back in the beginning of October. And he sent his at the end of July. He sent that at the end of July. I sent the mines in June. And he already had them back early October. And my cards had no ETA. And hopefully, I'll get them back by the end of the year. And this guy already had them back because he was sending like 3,000 cards because he's doing a bulk submission and getting a bunch of cards from other people. And those guys get pushed through the line. That even happens in PSA as well. That's why I go through a bulk submitter in PSA. Because I'm getting back my orders like in four and a half to five months. While if you send cards yourself, it's taking like six to seven months. So again, you get the cards back a month, a month and a half earlier in PSA when you submit through a bulk submitter. So that's what I'm doing there too. But when he told me that hopefully I'll get my cards around like bulk submissions. He didn't tell me my card specifically, but he just said bulk submissions. He probably had like a pre-typed out, um, you know, message that he was sending out to whoever was emailing him. And he just said, yeah, bulk orders hopefully will be back by the end of December, they were going to try to catch up on all the backlog. So at that point, I'm like, yeah, just send me back my cards because it's no way. Why I'm going to have them there? And I had, if you look at this, these, all these guys, they're like Jared Stidham. I didn't send a lot of Jared Stidham, obviously, but Jared Stidham's prices have tanked. So I'm paying 850 a card to get graded. And I'm like, and then there's no ETA on these cards. Now these cards would have sold well how I wanted to sell them, sell them right before the season kicked off. Yeah, these cards would have sold because the market was hot. People would have bought these up. Again, I got these cards for a dollar, two dollars, plus the grading. You're like $10, 10, $10 into these cards. And as SGC 10s, I'm thinking, yeah, people pay 40, 50 bucks for these, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks. Again, turn $10 and $30 and you do that over and over and over, over again. You're going to make money. But what happened is SEC prices tanked. They're taking forever to get the cards back. I missed my window to sell these cards. And I was still willing to think, but then like, oh, hopefully December. So that's when I was like, yeah, that's why I'm no longer actually going to send West. You see that things will have to change a lot. I'm just going to go through all these cards. Nick Bolsa Luminance, 99. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I mean, I don't think I was sent to SEC anytime soon. I mean, they would have to, you know, get their step their game up and actually show a lot of data that they're actually competing with the big boys before I send them out. Because right now, to me, there is only one grading card service, and that is PSA. BGS ain't it. Their card prices, their grading prices are higher than than PSA, and their their value is less. Like P, um, there's a the gap between PSA and BGS has widened as well. Because a lot of people, new people to the hobby, they're just they're enamored with that PSA 10. And again, uh, and another thing people don't understand is like a SGC 9.5 is not the same thing as a BGS 9.5. People will post them. That's why they don't sell as well. You have to get a 10 on SEC. And SGC is harder in grading because they have that 9.5. If a card is 9.5 at PSA, they have that decision. Is it going to be a 9 or is it going to be a 10? In SEC, if they see a little mark or one little thing, they're already going to bump it down to a 9.5 because they have that, that crutch to knock it down to a 9.5. And a 9.5 isn't gem mint. In SEC, in in BGS, a 9.5 is gem mint, so a 9.5 is comparable to a PSA 10. A 9.5 SEC is not comparable to a PSA 10 because it's not gem mint. It's a different grade. It's a different grading. They all three companies have different grading standards and different grading. The the grades mean different things. Got some hollows, and we're gonna get some gardeners. Oh yeah, lucky not paying 850 a pop on these. 
<clears throat> a lot of the same cards. Again, my mindset was, you know, pay a few dollars for these cards, cheap grading, and then the SEC 10s, they'll sell well. But SEC, honestly, <clears throat> their grading is very, very strict. They're probably the strictest grader out of all of them. And again, it's because they have that 9.5. When you think about it, their 9.5 is like a PSA 9 or BGS 9. And out of the gem mint, I think the gem mint rate is the lowest on SEC cards. They're really, really tough. And again, their prices don't reflect that. You know, they, they reflect the company that gives out easy 10s, how the market views their 10s. So it's really not worth sending to SEC at this moment. They're really strict on grading. I mean, they were less strict than their prices were that. You'd be like, okay, it makes sense. I'm like, you know, PSA 9s are going as SEC 10s. And yeah, they're selling less. They're selling for 50%. But... Um, is easier gem rate that will make sense but a harder gem rate and you get back less it just doesn't make sense it doesn't add up i don't know i mean if there's somebody out there who likes sec and just i'm not trying to hate on them or whatever it's just right now they they're not playing up there with the big boys in my opinion a lot of drew locks we're getting some drew lock hollows right here this one's uh number to 99 so again with the drew locks and daniel jones i'll probably hold and see how the season progresses. If they're like trending upward, they'll probably be ones I'll send the PSA. See, this is how I had sent all the cards to them. You see how it's easy when they get them to get graded. Ooh, they just slide it right out of there. Boom, graded. They could just slide it back in. There's less less chance of the card getting damaged. Easier for them to pull the cards out. Because again, you going into these card savers all the time, you, your thumb starts to get scratched up. Whenever you're going through, um, you know, just very simple, they can pull the tab, pull the card out. Instead of having to stick their finger in there. Because, again, sticking cards in and out gets very annoying. It really peels on your hands. So, you know, trying to do everything possible. I didn't take these sticky notes off. Like I said, <laughs> it's, I, all these cards actually have sticky cards. These are Daniel Jones um, Chronicles right here. Base. Just a bunch of the same cards. Again, you know my strategy. Different base cards. Auto Chronicles. And then, you know, I love these cards. These cards are beautiful. I'm just, I'm, I'll probably um, really look to hold these. Because I think um, if he starts to play well, I'll probably send definitely send these um, Gridiron Kings and the Luminance, which I love these Luminance. The shine on them is crazy. And then this was number 299. I, I like the Titans as well. Like I think Chronicles football is really, really nice this year. These have a, with the, you know, the planets in the background and everything just looks crazy. I love these cards. So a bunch of Chronicles. Some of the Chronicles is going to go into the PSA grading. And then we have some of the basketball stuff. We have a lock, look at the lottery. Um, Jared Culver, DeAndre Hunter, DeAndre Hunter. This is Jared, um, Darius Garland, luck of the lottery. And those cards are in good shape. And those players could think, but I don't know. I'm still indecisive about these. These are in good shape, these cards. But again, these are lower in cards to pay $15 a pop to get graded. I'm indecisive right now. I'm going to see where the market takes it. And then if the market is, you know, treating them well the psa 10s for those cards then i might look to send them but right now just not looking like this is another one this is our i think the red mirror out of certified again i don't know if it's worth the 15 dollars grading if i'll get a, a enough of an increase to make it worth it this is the graffiti from certified it's a really nice card i'm really indecisive to send this one i might send this one this is a really nice card in my opinion this one's a little bit off-centered but again, I was like, eh, I'll be fine with SEC 9.5. But as a PSA 9, is it really worth the time? Probably just wind up selling this raw. And then I had this gold wave that I'm not going to send to PSA. It has a soft corner right here. And then a little bit of edge wear up top. So I'm like, it's going to struggle to make a 9. So I'll probably just rather just sell this car off raw. There's no damage. And just sell it off like that. I think it's a lot easier to move. This one, I probably this one's really clean. Probably one I will send, but... Yeah, so most of these, I'll probably just wind up selling raw. Hold on to some of the QBs that I think have potential. Like obviously, Dwayne Haskins and um, Gardner, guys, I'm going to look to move. But I'm just going to hope to, uh, like, with um, Dwayne Haskins, what I'm doing is hoping that he gets traded. And then that hype from his trade boosts up his price. Gardner Minshew, just hoping he comes back, has a couple good games, and I can sell some of his stuff off that I have. Um, so, yeah, just had to get those cards back again. SGC is in a kind of a weird state right now. I'm not trying to hate on them, dog on them. Um, 
I mean, they're fine for whoever likes their service. There's people who wants change and wants to take the monopoly out of PSA. And I get it. There's a lot of freedom fighter for the, P, you know, but um, if you want to make money in this hobby, PSA is the way to go. Obviously, SEC was making waves back in June when I before before in June, but around May to June, they were making waves. They were going up the ladder and they were showing, you know, potential. But again, once they were shown that they couldn't keep up with the promises that they were making, that they were going to keep the, their turnaround times were going to be there and they're not like the other guys and this, that and all this that they were talking, they couldn't actually back it up. The market spoke and their card prices dropped. Now, obviously, for vintage, they're still pretty good. I think baseball market is pretty good. But for my bread and butter, they're not good. For modern football and modern basketball, I don't consider SEC even a contender in that realm. Um, again, their grading is really strict. Their after their you know their prices after you grade are not there, so it just makes no sense. PSA is the only way right now. They, you get them back if you send them in bulk. PSA right now is the fastest to get it back. They're like the middle of the pack in terms of pricing, but their resale value is way higher than everyone else. So I think it's just a no brainer to send a PSA. If anybody has any questions about what happened or anything like that, who should you grade? Right now, the people have asked me, who do I send my cards to for PSA grading? I send them the PC um, sports sports cards. Um, so you just type up PCSportsCards.com. It'll come up. Pretty simple. There's a tab right there for um, PSA submissions. And you can send any anything from one card to 100 cards to them. And again, you'll just pay whatever the bulk fee is or whatever service you're, you want. I think it's bulk is $15 a card. And if you want that quicker service, I forget what they, the new name they put it. It's $25 a card. Faster services are available too. You basically pay whatever the PSA price is on their on the PSA website. Because obviously they get good deals with PSA. So if PSA is charging $15 for you, if you go to their website, they'll charge you $15. But obviously PSA is not charging them $15 because they got to be making some money out of it. They're probably charging them like $12, $11. So they're making a lot of money. People who are grading cards in bulk. Um that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions you guys enjoyed the video please make sure to leave a like down below if you're new to the channel please make sure to subscribe till next time guys